Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Yankee and the Brit. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what we took away from round one of the 2021 NFL draft. And Maddie, I got some good, I got some bad, and I got some best players available still. What's your big takeaway from the draft yesterday? Well, I, I was up till six in the morning this morning uh, watching the NFL draft because they kept on keeping us guessing, kept on keeping us entertained. And there are plenty of players that not only we didn't have in our mock drafts, but nobody had in their mock drafts that have uh, that have gone in the first round. Is what That's what I took away from it the most. The, I think the first move that made me go wow was the... Uh, the Bengals move, as soon as the Falcons didn't trade out, it was always going to be Kyle Pitts uh, with how they've been talking about Julio Jones. And I thought the Bengals move made me go, like, I was a bit, uh, like I texted you and was like, that's not what I would have done. But Jamar Chase is a slam dunk wide receiver. So, you know, there's a, uh, Taven Jenkins is still sat there at the top of the second round for the Bengals to take if they, if they want to take him. So it's, it's that question, isn't it? That was my most wow. I would have took Penny Sewell, but yeah. we all heard. So I wasn't shocked that it was Jamar chase for a few days and it made sense. You're bringing in a receiver that your quarterback mm -hmm. does not have to build a chemistry with. You yeah. just better make sure you keep him from dying. So this next pick better be an offensive lineman. Yeah. And I, I think I saw the move and was like, what are they doing? first up but then as soon as i was like hang on jamar chase is jamar chase like you've got a top quality wide receiver best wide receiver like most all-round wide receiver in the draft and you've got him like you've got the guy and he's joe burrow's uh and teammate and the last time they played together they lit up the field that was the last time jamar chase played and, he and if you look joe burrow. as good as justin jefferson is he was number two to Jamar Chase two years ago. So, you yeah, know, on that Jamar national championship run. Yeah, and Jamar Chase could have come out last year if that was allowed. Like, he could have come out last year and still been one of the top wide receivers in the draft, if not the top guy. And the Bengals, they have so many holes. It's almost like, right, they took the best player. They took the most surefire thing because there are questions about Penesel. And I just feel sorry about him, uh, having to go to Detroit, like he was so hyped up to go to Cincinnati where like at least Joe Burrow's like something to be excited about. But in Detroit, there's, there's Detroit about. got the steal of the top 10 and got the best pick yeah. for where they were sitting for value because barring injury. And I know your boy, Chris Sims hates this term, but plug and play 10 to 15 year left tackle. Yep. Yeah, good. Great. Like great. Great pick for Detroit. I feel sorry for Penn Sewell, but at the same time, it's like you're going to have an NFL career for a long time if you're in Detroit. So, And if you're part there. of the reason that they turn it around, you're loved in Detroit forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you don't even have to win a Super Bowl, make the playoffs, become a contender, maybe make an NFC championship game. And everybody who helped turn that team around from Dan Campbell all the way down will never pay for a meal in Detroit again. Yeah, and I also think my other biggest takeaway is uh, talking about guys who I feel who I felt sorry for at the time. Uh, the Justin Fields and Mac Jones fall. They're the they're the big stories of the draft, and the reason Mac Jones's fall is so surprising, but shouldn't be to anybody, is they must have been playing games with us. Like the media and the football world were just playing games with us three or four weeks before the draft saying, oh, he's going to well, be number three, he's going to be this high, and then he just went exactly where he was going to go at the start of the whole drafting process. My biggest takeaway on the bad side, because I thought, well, let me start here. I'll, before I get to the negatives, because I will get there, I think the Lions were huge. I think it was – I think the Vikings and the Cowboys both manipulated the draft perfectly, even though I think the Vikings took a risk that could have blew up in their fucking face – but yeah, it didn't. But it ended, so ended you're the hero won. or the goat, and today they're the hero, right? They could have been the goat, though. They could have looked like a fool. But for the Cowboys to move back two spots, still get the guy that they're targeting, pick up a third is huge. And for the Vikings, who have no second, to drop back nine spots, still get the guy you were targeting and pick up two thirds. And what makes that so important is one of those thirds is the second overall pick in the third round. So yeah. now Minnesota has 
four threes, four fours. If they want to get in the second round and do something, they have way more than enough ammunition. I like, I was sweating bullets like, man, who are they going to take? Are they going to, and everybody I told you I wanted besides Christian, there's a, was popping off that board. I gave you a list of like three or four and they just kept popping off right before yep. we got there. But then I was like, all right, Christian Darisol, I'm okay with that. But I think yep. the Vikings and the Cowboys both manipulated the draft wonderfully. And I think it helped the Jets too. I think that was a great move up. Vera Tucker, protect yeah. your young quarterback. Think that all those trade those trades were great. Now to the bad. For and I'm gonna stick with the trades. I don't think this was the worst pick in the draft. But I think the Bears gave up way too much. But we're going to yeah, differ yeah, yeah. for a guy that I don't think is going to be a top 10 NFL quarterback where you see him differently. I'm sure you are you evaluate the trade differently. But, man, two first, a fourth, and a fifth to go up to get a guy. But what the hell else was Chicago going to do except, personally, they should have grabbed Mac Jones. Yeah, and I mean, they did – what they had to do. And I think it's more of a case of fields fits their offense a bit better than Mac Jones would because they don't necessarily have like, so in a, in a sense of Mac Jones would fit Denver better. Like if Mac Jones went to Denver, I would understand that over fields because Denver have the weapons, whereas Chicago don't have the weapons and just in fields, his legs will be able to get them out of trouble a bit more. And, that kind of thing. The only I'm thing is surprised weird to me, though, by the move up, like how massive it was, but it was exactly what they had to do. And in my eyes, they got the best quarterback that was on the board at that point. And that was Justin Fields. And if you believe he's the guy, you don't give up too much, but you feel like they probably could have gave up a bit less to move not as far. Cause they only had to jump the Patriots. And if the Vikings were willing to trade anyway, then it didn't really matter. Right, and the Vikings were trying to move into that spot, but they wanted Slater. So they were yeah. competing for the same spot for different positions. I think it worked out great for Minnesota. But the thing that always confuses me, and I want your take on this, is we always say, okay, well, first of all, it's a fictional Matt Nagy system. Like, it's arbitrary because we haven't seen it yet, right? Yeah, like, close. nobody's ever – so, but my question is, why do we always go – Oh, he doesn't fit that system. Like, look at New England. Look at, look at, like, um, Andy Reid. It's not Andy Reid's system. He looks at the talent he has. Josh McDaniels looks at the talent they have, and they build the system around this yeah. guy. So, and I'm not saying they did or didn't, but in my opinion, like, so I think Mac Jones is better than Justin Fields. So if, let's say the Bears did, but they didn't think he fit the system, just for argument's sake, wouldn't it be better to take a better player and create a different system? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Why fit a square peg in a round hole? I think it only the only way it will matter in terms of like the system is if you have them even. So if you have Justin Fields and Mac Jones on an even even playing field, then you think, well, we have to change our team up less if we That's take probably Justin what Fields over Mac Jones. The 49ers and Trey Lance. Yeah, that is that is exactly what happened with the 49ers and Trey Lance. That is I have no doubt that that is what happened. And that's why we both we both went on that. We we both went with that kind of thing and said, it's either Justin Fields or Trey Lance over Mac Jones for those reasons. It's not we were slating Mac Jones. Like, Mac Jones is a good player. I just think the, like, the running quarterback fits the 49ers better as I think it fits what Magnaghi did last year. Like, obviously... He's an NFL coach. He's a very talented guy, clearly. So he would be able to I personally think the Bears way. just threw away four picks, but that's just me. Yeah, I, that's how like that's how you evaluate. That's on and how you evaluate fields. I think they didn't even need to move if, that far. But even if it was Trey Lance, who I love, I think the Bears threw away four picks because they're going to ruin him. Yeah. There's going to be a <laughs> yeah. whole new coaching yeah. staff in a couple year, a year or two. It's not going to be their guy. It's going to be a bad situation all over again. And you're going to look at if he does not come out. And I feel like whoever the quarterback is has to overcome the coaching in the team. So yeah. if he doesn't come out and overcome this, you're Mitch Trubisky all over again. And I know I've shit on Mitch a ton, but poor Mitch Trubisky. I've said that too. Yeah. And it's, we were talking to, like everybody's been saying odds are two of these guys are going to be busts. And if you look at the two who I think it's most likely to be now looking at it, 
now that we've seen where they've gone to, it's Zach Wilson and Justin Fields. Not on a talent standpoint. People who've watched the podcast before know I love Justin Fields. He was my pick for the 49ers to take. And Zach Wilson's an incredibly talented guy. But you've gone to the Jets and you've gone to the Bears. So like, so that's, last that's, night, that's what it looks like. Last night when you text me that you think he has a bigger chance to be a bust because of the Jets, Wilson. Yeah. I absolutely agreed with you. And then the Jets moved up and I'm like, that was a now. great move. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, we got a new regime. We got a yeah. new head coach. This kid might be in the right spot, but for Jets fans, you got to give this kid four to six years. You yeah. got to give Greg Sol four to six years. You got it. Like they they're getting, it looks like they have a plan and they're going to execute it, which everybody does, but it looks like a plan that I can get on board with so far. Yeah, that so Elijah Vera took a move. That Elijah Vera took a move, changed my perception on the Jets. I still think I'm I'm waiting to pass judgment on the Jets because they've, for ever since I've been watching football, I can't think of a time where the Jets have been it's fair. incredibly good. So, so it's like it's, the Browns I've still the got Browns to look at it. Even though. Yeah. And it's like, if I'm picking two players that are most likely to bust because of their teams, it's those guys. Whereas I bet Justin Fields was sat there praying that he was going to fall to New England. Like at one point, I bet he was sat there thinking, or oh, whichever one of me or uh, Mac Jones goes to New England is probably going to have a more successful career, I think was the... That's, that's sometimes the thought that I'm thinking. It's like, if you're Trevor Lawrence, do you want to be the first overall pick? The monetary stuff is obviously better. The pu the publicity stuff is obviously better. But would you not have rather be the third pick in that draft? I think everybody wanted to be the third pick in this draft so they could go to the 49ers. But you know, you want to get you're a competitive guy if you're a football player. So you go for it. And I love the uh the Jets move. That's among the top performances of the night for me, taking all that draft capital and moving up. The Jets had a good night. The Cowboys, my Cowboys had a really good night. They took the best defensive player uh, in the draft, in my opinion. Um, I was upset when Sir Tan went. And then as soon as they took Micah Parsons, I became a little bit more at ease and was like, right, okay, actually, I'm I'm incredibly happy with that. Because I had Micah Parsons go into the Lions. I had him go into Carolina. I was surprised he was still there. And that made me very happy. And the third pick, from the uh, from the Eagles makes it even sweeter because Cowboys Nation is going mad saying why did we trade with the Eagles why why are we trading with our rivals it's like because he would have gone to the Giants anyway and the Giants are more stacked so the guys the guys in our division whatever so give him to the worst team like in the division you know like he would be a bigger asset for the Giants it's not like you let them move up 20 picks either yeah or exactly like know? we just took a nice third round pick yeah it was a short move for a good return yeah. and it didn't really hurt anything so I think that's kind of overblown quick thing yeah. I wanted to touch quick though and I don't have to get deep into this but um the Packers with cornerback Eric Stokes Georgia He's oh. good, but I had him like the 58th, 60th round. best yeah. player. I had him a second round pick. I think they could have picked him up in the second round without moving or just moving up a little. Yeah, I just have the fact that there were so many good players left, but we'll get to those at the end, that it was crazy. But there's two that I know me and you are really going to disagree on. So I kind of wanted to hit them. One that I really like that I don't believe you're a big fan of, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. So last night I was a little caught off guard, but the more I let it sit and ponder, I'm really good on this. Jacksonville Jaguars, Travis Etienne, running back Clemson, reunited with Trevor Lawrence. I actually think let's just build this offense around this kid. We can, yeah. And I know this sounds stupid. You worry about the defense a little later because it's a whole rebuilding project. And with the first pick today, the first pick, you know, tomorrow, you, how, you know how it goes. I think there's a ton of offensive linemen left. I think there's a ton of really skilled value players, defensive players, if you want to go there. I had Travis Etienne as the best running back in the draft, even though I do really like Najee Harris. So yeah. last night I was caught off guard. Today, I'm like, I love that move. I don't hate the move. The The only issues I have with the move are they're at the top of the second round where Etienne probably will be 
like probably would have been. I think they were scared of the Bucks. Yeah, I yeah, that's the only that's the only thing that I could I could think of. Somebody said something to spook them, and that the the way that it's fallen, they've actually got quite lucky because they can still take Trev and Morig at the top. I thought they would use Morig for that pick, um, and then get a weapon at the top of the first. So, so that would be Etienne or whoever whoever's left. But Trevor Moore is still there, so they can they can take him if they want to anyway. In which case, good move. You've got it in my eyes the wrong way around, but you've still got it. So I'm looking at the draft board to my right here and uh, the all the picks. So the more I think about it, they also could have been worried about Buffalo because Buffalo could definitely have upgraded their running game. But the two uh, there's three top running backs in this draft. You can argue which way you want them to go. So two of the top three come off the board. Um. I'm just really liking this idea. This sounds weird, but I've never really thought about it before too much. Let's give them somebody they already know. Yeah, that seems There's to be a theme. There's already chemistry. Chase, Trevor. Like, you know what I mean? Chase going with Burrow, Trevor going with ETN. There might be a whole lot to this because Jalen it's less Hurtson. of a learning curve. Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith working together. Yeah, as well. they, like, they've worked together. I was, I was impressed. Like, when I didn't Tua just get Waddle. Yeah, two just got Waddle. Two, two got I'm Waddle as well. And you, you sit there and you think, yep, that's a that you bring a wide receiver in, you bring a weapon in who's already got a rapport with the quarterback. <clears> and <throat> I'm surprised people haven't been doing it sooner because that that seems weird to me. It's like uh, in football in the um, in football in the UK, you tend to buy a couple of players from Spain and they hang out to you make them hang out together all the time. And like sometimes your best player if they're best mates on the market, then you go and buy their best mate as well because it keeps everyone happy in the dressing room and they have immediate connection because they've been playing football together since they were nine years old. So I'm surprised that that hasn't happened more often. The and NBA I, does it. Yeah, it's not like I don't like the the Jags right. move for Etienne. It's just I'm not a big fan, fan of taking running backs in the first round anyway. But if you're going to do it, do it with Etienne and and trevor i i do believe they've not like they had etienne highest on their board and the steelers had naji harris higher on their board so it's kind of like it's not just they got freaked out because naji harris went it's because they actually had that guy the highest on their board uh and i like it a lot what's the other move that you were uh well i want to ask with? you about one more quick and i want to finish off with the one i know that we're both going to agree on yeah, but the one I got to ask you on: What did you think of Peyton Turner, defense and Houston going to the Saints? Because I also that, had him slotted middle of the second round. Yeah, that caught me off guard. That caught me off guard. To be perfectly honest, I thought they would. I thought they would be more likely to take a weapon than that. I wasn't entirely sure what they were what they were doing with that pick. I was very tired at that point. Like the end of the the end of the second round was really starting to when people were throwing names at me that I hadn't. That I'd heard of, but I hadn't read the, t- hadn't watched the tape and stuff. I was really struggling to wrap my head around it anyway. But um, I, I wasn't big on the move, to be perfectly honest. I think there's, there was other pass rushers on the board. There still are other pass rushers on the board. There's uh, Jeremiah Wusu Koroma, who we both think is a defensive stud, who we're going to talk about in a, in a little bit. And there are plenty of weapons on the board for them to have. Terrence Marshall Jr. comes to mind anyway. And, uh, Elijah Moore still being there blows me away. Uh, Just blows Elijah me away. Moore, yeah, and th- th- there's still plenty of guys that they could have taken as a weapon, and they would have still had it by the sounds of it. They would have still had a chance to pick this guy up at the end of the second because I, I honestly haven't heard his name since about three weeks ago. Like about three weeks ago, I looked him up because he was on the PFF big board at like a hundred and something. So I looked him up, watched a bit of his tape, and I haven't heard his name since. And then all of a sudden, he's in the uh, he's now a saint at the in the first round. Yeah, that caught me off guard. Congrats I, to the guy. I can we can go on to Oakland's pick? Both caught us off guard, but we knew they were going offensive line. Everybody, so that's whatever. Everybody will be I, talking Oakland's pick. There's no need for us to do it, you know. The one I know we agree on though is the Washington Football Team. Like, well, I have so much me. faith in you guys. <laughs> Man, Riverboat Ron, we have that defense. 
I'm joking, but Taylor Heineke, let's go. Like, you know, they found a way. I had so like much the, faith. There's a reason they've been a joke in the, there's a reason they're the joke side of the NFC East for like some time. There's like, there is a reason they find a way to mess it up. It's the curse. They've had a curse on them for a long time. And it's, uh, and I'm not saying Jamin Davis can't play. Like, I'm not saying that. That's I'm just yeah. saying, like, what the hell are you picking him that high for? That's not this what is we're a saying. guy that I swear I wish we could redo the draft and have them not pick him. And they could see that they're going to get him in the late second, third he's round. He's an easy, he's an easy second or third round pick as well. And he's like, there are other guys that are like Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa is still on the board. And yeah, uh, no, that's Davis has been picked ahead of him. Best players left. He's my yeah. best player left. Yeah. He can play linebacker. He can play safety. He can play corner and he can yeah. rush the passer. And so Bolton's Bolton's still there. Like, and you've picked Jim and Davison. So no, look, the the draft is a crapshoot. I wasn't big on who um uh people have said to me, all oh, the Giants had a really good night. And I was like, the Giants would have had a fantastic night if they picked a better wide receiver, like in my in my eyes, like the guy that they picked, um, T- Tony, uh, he can play like he's a good wide receiver. I have Terrence Marshall Jr. rated higher than him. Elijah Moore's higher on the board than he is. And so like, yeah, great move getting all of those picks from the Bears, like really good move. As soon as Devontae Smith went off the board, you think, right, OK, but they got jumped for the wide receiver that they wanted. And then they've traded back and you think, yep, good trade back. Well played. And then they seem to pick the wrong wide receiver for me. I, I can't remember if Rashad Bateman was still on the board at that point as well or or not. But um, Terrence Marshall Jr. Is, was still on the board. Uh, was still on the board as well. So there are a few. The NFC East had a very mixed bag of a night, and uh, the Washington football team's pick kind of sums that up. A uh, big shout out to my man Zaven Collins going to the Arizona Cardinals. Before we go to best players available, I want to say how much I love that pick. And Zaven Collins, I was standing on the soapbox for him from the start to be uh, to be in the top fifteen picks. I was I was really backing the guy, and I think he's found a good landing spot in uh, in Arizona. That is a very quick to the ball defense now with Buda Baker, Zayvon Collins, and Isaiah Simmons. Miami, if the health issues all work out, Jalen Phillips, huge. Yep. Great pick. Yeah. Miami had a good night as well. My, like Miami will have been good. I know you weren't huge on, but you didn't hate. I love Joe Tryon linebacker, Washington to the Bucks because it's such a luxury pick. JPP's yeah. only got a year left on his deal. He's almost the exact prototype. Come in, learn, let JPP move on, have a younger guy because you're going to be in cap hell next year anyway. So I thought that was a smart move just on that fact. But so we both got um, Uzi Koromoa, linebacker. Uzi Koromoa, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't he's, do it. He's so I didn't top. pretend my way through. That's okay. He's the top of my, he's the top of my That's talent left on okay. board. Very top as well. Not even, not even close. Like if you've listened to the podcast before, you'll understand how much I, how important I think linebackers are going to be in the like, in the well, near future. It like it's going to be the new, it's going to be the new one, and it's like, oh, we see Carmelo. Especially these I, hybrids. I really, yeah, yeah, exactly. The hybrids, I, like him who can play safety yeah. linebacker, so you can play him at safety, and then all of a sudden you're playing somebody like Gronk and he moves in and he can move down to linebacker and you're like, yeah. cool, we're okay. If you need to cover, like if you need to cover Travis Kelsey and get to the quarterback, Jeremiah Wusu koromo is probably the best at the two things. Whereas like Micah Parsons is just an absolute stud at killing the quarterback, making mad tackles and can do some coverage. Zayvon Collins isn't the best in coverage. Whereas, he is just electric going after the ball kind of guy. So Owusu Karamo is the best all round uh, linebacker and the best, most talented player on the board. I really like Christian Barrymore still sat there. I think he's the best uh, defensive interior lineman on in the thing. And he's still, he's still sat there. I wouldn't hate it if the Cowboys picked him, uh, if he managed to fall to them, but I think he'll go before that. Uh, Asante Samuel Jr. is still there. A uh, very talented corn- cornerback and uh, Tevin Jenkins. I re- uh, I'm really surprised that Tevin Jenkins is still there as well. Um, 
a very talented ta- potential tackle. And I think there's a chance he's going off the board very quickly to the Bengals, pretty much. Yeah, I agree with everybody you said. I got Trevor um, Morin, Morig, sorry. Oh, uh, Trevor, um, yeah, Trayvon Morig. Yeah, yeah, him. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I wrote Trevor. I can, I'm having a great day already. And then yeah. I beat the table for Elijah Moore already. Um, I think Jalen Mayfield tackle out of Michigan is going to go early. I think Tevin Jenkins is going to go early. And I think Landon Dickerson is going to go real early in this draft too. Yeah. I think you're going to see a run on linemen. That's not saying I don't think some of these other players might be a better value. I just think this is going to be the sweet spot because as soon as one goes, everybody's going to move. You have to one. take him. Yeah. You have but to take him. And I a- think like Oushu Koromo could see himself fall in, in the second round as well. That's what that's what surprises me about this. Maybe maybe the uh, somebody somebody picks him up, but like those teams that are still left, the reason that Tevin Jenkins is still there is because a lot of those teams at the top didn't take the linemen to start with. So I I can see Jenkins will go to the Bengals and then it'll start from there. That's when it'll start to you'll see where all the linemen go and uh, Landon Dickerson. You know, like listeners to the podcast know we love Landon Dickerson and. I can't believe the Packers didn't take it. And the more I think about it, the more I'm annoyed at the Packers for not taking him. And then I think there's two to three quarterbacks who end up going in the second round, but yeah. I think there's three that go tonight between round two and three. I think you're going to have Davis Mills, Kellen Mond, and Kyle Trask. You can put them whatever order you prefer. I just put them in the order that I prefer. Yeah, if um, Washington can turn around their entire draft if they manage to get the right quarterback out of those I fell in love with Davis Mills round. over the last week yeah I've been watching yeah, him for like the last week and just fell in love with him I don't I think if he didn't nuke his knees in college he would have been a first round pick yeah and I think yeah definitely Callum Mond is very high Chris Sims love him brought too. him to the attention and if you have a Kellen Mond is it? I know we were just talking about systems, but if you if you've got those three guys ranked in the same order, uh, Trask, Davis, and Mond, Mond is the guy you take if you have weapons. Personally, is a uh, is is how I think you Trask look at. Trask scares and Kyle me more Trask than the other is, two. He scares yeah, me I, a little though because he's a big guy, but he was throwing to a monster in Kyle Pitts. He's not yeah. as mobile as the other guys. Whereas uh, Mond is mobile. He's not the most blow you away but he's athletic enough where yeah if you're looking for super athletic that's when davis mills comes in mond and mills are really super accurate kyle trask is pretty accurate um i think all three oh i think all three will stay in the nfl as a backup or better for years yeah and kyle trask is the guy most likely to bust out of those three in my eyes because he doesn't have pff um say something like if you're mobile your floor is instantly higher because you can run out you can run out of trouble you can set an offense around you running so uh if you're mobile your floor is instantly higher and uh Kyle Trask can't doesn't seem to be the most athletic dude uh go kind of reminds me of Big Ben Roth yeah yeah so uh so who have you got winning the draft so far after night one oddly and he, I, you just caught me off guard, so I'm just going to give you yep. my initial reaction. Initial straight away. The Jets, yeah, I was – the more I think about the Jets, like obviously we'll see how the Zach Wilson thing turns out. I believe in Zach Wilson, very talented. I love Miami They might too, ruin though. him. They might, they might ruin him. Uh, I like what Miami did. But for me, it's got to be your Vikings. I Because they would have taken – like it was a risk, but the risk paid off. Like they would have – Taken uh, think, Christian Darasol where they took him. They I would think have taken I agree Christian with you. Darisol. They had the best move of the draft, but I give the yeah. Jets and the Dolphins just because you had two picks. So yeah, it's two more, picks. you know, and two but, successful yeah, if picks. The Vikings, if the Vikings end up with Davis Mills today because of that trade last night, yeah, I will do. I will do a fucking cartwheel, literally. And yes, I can do a cartwheel. But <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if the Cowboys end up with Asante Samuel, I'll be pretty psyched about how our drafts love that kid. so far i thought he was I, a first round pick for sure yeah i can't believe there's yeah me too i me too but i greg newsom is also people. a yeah greg newsom is also a very very good cornerback but i believe 
in Asante Samuel a little more. And if he manages to fall there or Trevor Morig, then I'm going to be, I'm like, after the first two rounds, we're set and we've got full picks to work with tonight. So that's, that's going to be fun to see. How many of the Vikings got? Four with their thirds, but oh. they have 11 picks left. Yeah, I, the Cowboys have about the same amount as well. Yeah, so it's got, like we got ammunition to move up. And then yeah, I know Rich I'll, Bielman, he's going to give up a ton. Not a ton, but he's going to give up three, four picks to get back into the second round. And then mm-hmm. with what he's got left, he's going to trade back to accumulate the picks he lost. Watch. It's exactly what will happen. I like it. I like it. That's a great way to manipulate the draft. Um, first name off the board for you tonight. First name off the board. Who do I think it should be or who do I think it will be? Who do you think it will be? Landon Dickerson. Sorry, say that again. I, I didn't Oh, Landon Dickerson. Landon Dickerson. Yep. L- would love that move, by the way. Just, I think they that would make, to go that would make a lot of sense. If they don't trade out of that spot. Yeah, I think uh, Trayvon Morig. That's who I... I would not argue with that either, yeah. but... That's who I, that's um, who I think it's going to be. That to be a good pick, but me and you both think, I think we agree that Coromo is probably the one that should go first, but he's not going to. That's not how the draft works. Yeah, that's <laughs> he's the one that should go first, but that's not how the draft works. So, uh, yeah, anyway, great video. I'm excited about tonight. I will be texting you all the way through and will have matchsticks in my eyes to keep me awake for the full All right, time. you go get caffeinated, my friend. Yeah, I'll probably take a nap right now and then and then get back to it. That's a good idea. I'm going to go catch up on some Pat McAfee. All right, man. Talk to you soon. All right, have a good one, everybody. Thanks for watching. Check us out on all the podcasting platforms. All right, one world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio.